And hello, YouTubers and fellow Open Foamers. Welcome back to our heat transfer, uh, buoyant simple foam, uh, little tutorial, little walkthrough. Okay, so in the last video, we were talking about how uh, the buoyant cavity case is run. And I mean, for the sake of uh, curiosity and of course uh, usefulness, we want to see how to uh, put in heat flux conditions. So, um, I, I tried to find some tutorials where there was such a heat flux condition, but um, I found that, okay, perhaps the other way, uh, the, one of the easier ways to do the heat flux condition is to use this fixed gradient, right? Because uh, heat flux, heat flux is, uh, after all, uh, minus K, partial T, partial x, right? There's a spatial gradient across the x direction. This is the for this is Fourier's law and um, perhaps it is uh, easy to put in this heat flux condition through a gradient. So yeah, I'm gonna try this and already I have I am actually uh, I have actually just cleaned up the old case and I did an all run. Okay, I did an all run N. Can you see here? All run N means I'm running this in the background. Okay, so um, so let's take a look uh, at what this uh, uh, what this uh, conditions were like. So let's let's go to zero and I'll show you what I typed. The VIT will be this. So the front and back and the top and bottom are of course zero gradient, the adiabatic conditions. But the hot side, I gave a negative temperature gradient of like 100. So this is uh, something like what the heat flux will be like. And the heat sink will of course be this cold side, right? And we will want to see uh, what effect it will have when we, when we just put in this uh, heat flux condition or this temperature gradient, okay? So, yeah, uh, let's see, yeah. For example, see, when you, when you see temperature, we have a fixed heat flux, we use fixed gradient. This is what uh, this is what this uh, open form user guide says. Uh, so um, this is very minor change. We can just do it like that and see what happens. Oopsie. All right, so there is a post-processing being done. That's why it suddenly appears like that. And let's do a simple touch. Uh, buoyant uh, cavity dot foam. Okay, let's go to para view, and I'll just type F five to reset everything. Okay. So, all right. Now where is everything? Um, let's see the temperature. Okay, this is a pretty uniform temperature. Probably something looks kind of funny. Uh, something is wrong. Let me see. We see there's some sort of a. We see that it's some sort of a, uh, you know, little difference in a, in a temperature here. You can see this a little white plume coming up. Of course, we can. There you go. I think using the using the scaling uh, actually helps. We see some plumes going up. All right, uh, and we see the velocity. And we use the scale again. And yes, we, we do see little bits, very little bits of convection current. Okay, so where is, what is the convection current in? All right, let's take a look at the cold side. Okay, I'm gonna take out, the, take out the internal mesh so that you can see this is the cold side, the left side, which you see here is the cold side. The right side you see is the hot side. So you apply the internal mesh. And the right side is the hot side where you see the heat flux being put in. And then of course, uh, at, it rises up and then the uh, it sinks over here. Okay. So as you know, uh, thermal conductivity of air is pretty horrible. So uh, even if I give a temperature gradient of let's say uh, minus 100 and I, I use minus because 
uh, heat actually flows from high temperature to low, low temperature. So this is where the heat will flow. Yeah. Um, so even if I if I give a temperature gradient that uh, of a minus hundred degrees C, uh, per meter, all right. Um, problem is it's that uh, well that that is just one Kelvin per cm. Can you imagine how low that is? Okay, so maybe for air for air we might want to give the the gradient something more drastic to kick. To kick in some convection all right so let's give a heat flux of maybe to the power of six so that we can have something more drastic all right so i'm going to do all clean i'm going to do an all run n and of course i'm going to fast forward the video so i'm probably gonna I mean, in real life, gonna uh, hold on. What? Okay. Okay. Let's see what the error is. I'll run n. So there's a block mesh for in simple form. Okay. Let's see what the block says. There probably is some sort of error. If not, there it's inch. Okay, foam fatal error. Yeah, negative initial temperature T zero. Oh. Okay, so probably means that uh, a temperature gradient is uh, so steep that uh, something is pretty wrong okay maybe the temperature gradient is too much let's instead let's instead give it now what why do i say that because uh, uh when you have a, a negative temperature gradient you have to assume a low temperature and a high temperature so i think something is off in that sense where the where one of the postulated temperatures used to create that temperature gradient is too high or too low so that's why you have that error okay that's my guess okay okay all clean uh, let's give it uh, let's give it just 1000 instead of a million because uh, maybe that's too much okay so let's go again all run and okay so now it has the buoyant simple foam it is not giving me that sort of error oopsie wrong one log vi log dot buoyant simple foam and now it is okay so the loop is starting to run of course now we expect the uh, the gradient to be much uh, more steep 10 times as steep so we should expect 10 times the heat flux and uh, we can see the temperature profile that comes from that uh, i'm going to pause i mean i'm going to fast forward again as usual which basically means pausing the recording for me and i'll come back when this thing is done then we can sort of analyze some results uh, okay looks like it's almost done so uh, now we have the files that we need let's take a look and reload this thing i will just put f5 all right take a look at that uh, we can rescale you see that the heat flux is much more much more okay let's use the magnitude uh, rescale Mm. So the hot side is obviously getting a lot of a uh, lot of more sort of a, a convection going on. It's a zero point three two because we increase the heat flux a lot. Okay, increase the heat flux a lot, and then the left side is the cold one. Okay, so now um, 
yeah, the, the, the profile isn't as nice as the constant temperature one because that, that means we have different heat flux at different uh, points of the wall that gives that sort of boundary layer pattern. But uh, you can see this turbulence actually developing, this boundary layer, uh, which shows that, you know, uh, putting this heat flux condition actually works, where you have a negative heat flux for uh, positive uh, put input of temperature gradient. And of course, you if you put a positive uh, temperature gradient, that means it's a cooling wall. It's a cooling kind of a boundary condition where it uh, it's a heat sink. Okay, so um, these are these are how the boundary conditions are being set up. Of course, if you don't want to look at the temperature, okay. All right, so temperature. You can see which is the hot side and the cold side. Ah, oh, okay. Let's take a look. Ah, okay. Maybe I was mistaken. The the cold temperature is on the right hand side now. The hot temperature is on the left hand side. Um. Hmm. So what's going on here? Ah. So okay. Let's say we have the let's put the axis here. This is my guess anyway. Uh, axis grid. Okay. So the x-axis goes from left to right, as it should be. Um, if we put a negative gradient here, with respect to x anyway, um, what, what, what would happen? If we have a negative gradient with respect to the x direction, we would expect, we would expect the temperature to go down, right? The temperature gradient for, to go from this way to this way. So that means that this side becomes the cooling part, this side becomes the heated part, right? So I suppose uh, there we, we gotta kind of be careful how we, we put uh, these temperature gradients down. So there's a little more to it than just, oh, a negative heat flux means, uh, negative temperature gradient means, uh, uh, yeah, negative temperature gradient means a positive uh, heat flux. So it's positive in the x direction, but negative in the minus x direction. So I think, yeah, we will have to take this into account as well. So to get the correct effect, okay. Oopsie. Let's, uh, let's actually change both sides. So... Uh, we want the hot side to give a uh, heat flux in the negative x direction. So I'm going to change it to this. And just for the, okay, for the sake of comparison, we will change that. That should give it the correct one. Um, and of course, the cold side, we can actually change it to a fixed gradient as well. And I put the gradient to see whether it's correct. We want, uh, we also want the heat flux to go in the negative x direction. So I'll just put one to the time to the my to the three over here, so that uh, we have uh, heat flux going from here to here, which is the right side of the wall, which is hot, and from here to here. So the heat flux goes in the negative x direction. Okay, so that's what it should do for hot and cold wall. So I'm going to do all clean for the last time and all run and, and I'm going to fast forward. All right, so it looks like we're almost done. I'm just going to press the F5 to see whether the theory I am putting forth is correct. Okay. Okay, so let's rescale. Okay. So we have... Uh, what do we have here? Okay, we, we have a part where... Uh, 
Lots of the temperature is going up. Okay, this is not what I expected. <laughs> All right, um, let's see what's going on. We have a we have a part where the uh, <laughs> it's heating up towards the top. Um, it's heating up towards the top. All right. So we started from an initial temperature of three hundred, and then both sides are now heating. So what? What I thought it was was wrong. So, the it's not about uh, heat flux going from the negative x to the positive x. It just means that uh, in this case, positive gradient means positive heat flux. You don't have to invert it negatively. So that was my mistake. Okay. So um, for the last time, I will try again to alter alter the the uh, heat fluxes so that we can produce a, a hot and cold wall. So I want to put this as a hot wall and then this as a cold wall. And let's see whether this is the correct. Okay, so in this case both sides are, are pumping out heat. That's why you have this big plume on top and there's no circulation. Uh, in a circle as we are talking about before. So let's do an all clean for the last time I hope. Hopefully this is the correct one. So do note why I'm making uh, changes over here. Okay, so we should have a positive, temp positive uh, gradient value uh, that will give a positive heat flux. Negative gradient value will give a negative heat flux. So that's that's where it should be. Uh, so I kind of spent one video messing around with that uh, to see where to see whether it was uh, based on the direction of the the x-axis or uh, was it uh, something else. So um, yeah, now now we learned it with uh, some experiment, some data, some simulations that are running. Again, fast forward the last time. I hope this video doesn't shoot past 20 minutes. I'm going to uh, hold it here for a while. Fast forward. All right. So like a few minutes later, we are OK. So we can press F5 now. Hopefully, it gives us the correct results. Ah, so let's rescale. Yes. OK. Can we take a look at this? Uh, looks beautiful. So the right hand side is the hot side. So just to be sure, just to be sure, we can take a look here. Uh, we take out the internal mesh. We just apply the hot. So the right side is hot. The left side is cold. And we have a convection current. So the it, here it's hot. The left side is cold. Um, this is perfect for what we want. Um, let's take a look at the U velocity. OK. So the magnitude is closest to the wall. It is the highest. And the magnitude uh, for in the center is kind of a minuscule. So there is a circulation effect going on. If we want to take a look at the Y velocity. So very positive Y direction going up here. Negative Y direction velocity going down here, which is expected of a cold wall. So right uh, after some oh sorry after some uh, bump, bumming around with the um, boundary conditions we have found out how to put in heat flux conditions using the fixed gradient uh, boundary condition and that will give and uh, remember positive uh, gradient means positive heat flux negative gradient means negative heat flux so <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, that's all I have for you this video. Uh, sorry it took longer than I expected. I kind of uh, uh, didn't know what I was... Yeah, I kind of forgot. Uh, I was just figuring stuff as we went along. So, But we, we have the, the pieces of information here. Uh, how to put in uh, fixed gradients. We experimented with it to see what happened. And that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.